They don't weigh you when you go on the plane, they weigh your luggage. You will go that long without doing your laundry. Ooh, guilty. Ooh. <laughs> I had trouble packing to come home, let's just say that. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Daisy. Welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be continuing a series that I started on my channel, this study abroad series, because I was a study abroad student last year for the academic year at Kingston University in London, and it's kind of become a big part of my brand here on YouTube. So I'm starting the series, or I'm continuing the series, to help you in navigating your program and making sure you have the best experience possible. I've already created a video on the general, how to get started, how to study abroad, and also I've made Made a how to find accommodation video but this video how to pack for study abroad this could definitely help anyone going anywhere I was pretty lost when it came to packing honestly like I've had travel experience before studying abroad but packing for such a long period of time is really hard to do especially when you have limited space so the first thing we're gonna talk about is what bag you should bring and I feel like this is a topic that people kind of gloss over they don't really put that much thought into it and so I'm just gonna kind of go through the options and what I did so the things you should take into consideration when you're picking out how many bags you should bring what size bag you should bring what type of bag you should bring is how long are you going to be on your study abroad program is it going to be a few weeks a month a year a semester so you also have to keep in mind are you doing any traveling while you're abroad if you're doing any weekend trips to other countries or within your country that you're going abroad to how the storage is in your accommodation i know my accommodation had like under the bed storage my bed opens <laughs> One of my suitcases just had to like stay out in my room all year, which was kind of annoying because I was in a small room. Also, do not forget a school bag. I used my Konkin, I'll talk about that later, but you have to remember that you're going there for an academic experience and you will be attending classes. So what I did when I went abroad for the year, I took this American tourist or luggage set. It was a big bag, a medium bag, and a small carry-on. And then I also brought my Fjall Robin Konkin with me while I traveled. And other than that, I took a few reusable totes for groceries there are definitely options when it comes to what suitcases to bring i brought all hard shell but having like the softer suitcases or like collapsible duffel like rolling duffels those are definitely easier for under the bed storage i'm really really glad i brought a few of those reusable totes and i was doing things like grocery shopping going to the gym going to a cafe to study going to the library and i also used those as like my dirty laundry bags or packing cubes while i was traveling but i really wish i invested in some packing cubes before i went abroad because i definitely would have been able to pack more and pack more efficiently and I also wish I brought a better bag for backpacking because I did do quite a bit of backpacking while I was abroad So that kind of leads me in to this lovely bag that I'm about to show you that baboon to the moon Actually kindly kindly sent out to me if you didn't know I'm studying abroad again Actually, I'm doing semester at sea in the spring of 2021 I was originally gonna do the fall 2020 voyage, but it got canceled. I got moved to the 2021 one I was in the market for a new backpacking bag and so when they reached out to me I Was very excited to say the least all their products are are made with the highest grade materials and they have a lifetime warranty which is absolutely amazing all of their colors and prints of their bags are limited edition so i chose this black color but i also chose it for the pattern that's inside it's a very chaotic print which is very on brand for me so i absolutely love that i really liked the black because i like to keep it sleek and neutral toned when i'm traveling so i don't attract too much attention to myself so this bag is the go bag and the size small it's advertised as a three-day packing volume and it's pretty much for like those weekend getaways which are perfect for study abroad it holds 40 liters and it only weighs three and a half pounds it's made with om stardust ballistic shell material and secured with alpine grade universal double stitch construction it's waterproof it has a lockable zipper it has detachable and adjustable shoulder straps it has four pockets and it meets all the TSA guidelines when it comes to locks and sizing requirements. The best part about this, in my opinion, is that it doesn't have a lot of outside pockets. If someone's gonna try to pickpocket you, they're literally reaching right to the back of your head. Going off of that, the zipper to get into the main compartment of the bag is on your back, so no one can really get in that way either. They also went ahead and sent out the creamsicle packing cubes for me. That was awesome. These packing cubes come with a small one and a big one, so I can put like maybe some underwear in one and some shirts or pants in another one. There's a mesh window on these so they're ventilated and they also have pouches inside of the packing cube so you can pack inside the packing cubes then pack in the main compartment and then zip them up so i'm very very excited to pack with those as you can see from my overlay clips they do fit a lot inside of them so i'm so excited to start using this so just to go over how i do it if i did it again i would bring my large 
hard shell case and then my medium hard shell case as well because those fit inside of each other and so I can store them that way. But I wish I left the rolling carry-on at home and I'd bring my Baboon to the Moon bag as my carry-on and then I'd have any other bags that I'm bringing, any totes, any backpacks, any kind of school bag, I'd have that already inside my hard shell cases. So when you're packing your clothes, you obviously can't bring your entire wardrobe with you. You're not exactly moving with boxes, you're moving with a couple suitcases. So having a capsule wardrobe was the best for me when I was going on my study abroad program. So I just took to like neutral colors that I can mix and match really easily. I took only one pair of each wash of jeans so I wasn't overpacking. I would say bring enough socks and underwear for two weeks because sometimes you will go that long without doing your laundry. Ooh, guilty. Ooh. <laughs> Definitely bring your practical basics, your basic t-shirts, your basic jeans, not your ripped jeans, but your like more presentable jeans, I guess you could say. Some countries don't really like the ripped jeans, low cut top look that a lot of Americans have. So just keep that into consideration. Make a Pinterest board. That's what I did of just some outfit inspiration of things you can mix, mix and match. I cannot stress this enough you will shop. I went in with the expectation that I wasn't going to shop and I still ended up buying like three jackets, a couple pairs of pants. I even bought a pair of shoes. I don't know. I bought a lot, a lot more than I thought I would anyways. I had trouble packing to come home. Let's just say that. Leave room in your bags because once again, you will buy. So don't overpack when you're going there because you will be overpacking on your way back. Okay, when it comes to shoes, you don't want to go overboard, but I do understand that there are a lot of options you can bring. I brought more than a few pairs of sneakers, but that's pretty much all that I wear anyways. I brought my black high tops, my white Adidas sneakers. I brought some booties and some heels in case I went to anything fancy. I might have brought a few more pairs, but shoes are very, very bulky and so they're a lot harder to pack. But definitely try to keep your bulkiest shoes or shoes that you don't wear as often at home. Bring a pair of sneakers or trainers, something you can work out in. A nice pair of sneakers, I guess, that you can wear just casually. A nice pair of shoes if you're going to an event. And if you have bulky shoes you wanna bring, like if I study abroad again, I'm definitely gonna bring my Doc Martens and those are definitely bulky, so I would wear those on the plane. They don't weigh you when you go on the plane, they weigh your luggage. So wear your bulkiest everything on the plane. Other packing essentials that I might not have thought about when I was going abroad originally, I kind of thought about these at the last minute, which by the way, I packed for study abroad two days before I left. So there was a lot that I kind of scrambled to get. So if you have any medications that you need to get topped up, but you'll be abroad, talk to your doctor, they'll probably prescribe you um, a couple months in advance so you don't have to worry about that. Any makeup that you know is only sold in the US, definitely stock up on that while you're here. Chargers and electronics, just make sure you have the right converters or you plan on buying a new like block for your iPhone charger. If you're planning on buying school stuff abroad, you don't have to worry about it. But when I went to the UK, they oddly didn't have spiral bound notebooks and that's what I used to take notes so I had to use what they had at like Primark which wasn't my favorite so if you like your spiral bound notebooks or a certain type of folder or a certain brand of pen definitely bring those if you like peanut butter this is a weird one but if you like peanut butter bring a jar of peanut butter with you in the UK at least their peanut butter was not great and if you wanted real American peanut butter from an American food store. It was very overpriced. So if you have the space, definitely bring peanut butter. That is such a weird tip, but it's true. Also, do not forget to take copies of your passport, your visas, your ID, any kind of identification that you'll need because if you end up losing one of those things, you'll need a copy of it so you can get a new one. So I had a whole folder of multiple copies of all of my documents that I kept in my backpack, in my carry-on, so I know that they wouldn't get lost even if my luggage got lost. So when you get there, as soon as you get to the airport, just go to an ATM and take out money there just so you know that your card will work. If you go to use it anywhere, it won't be declined. Oh, also if you have a US debit card or credit card, make sure it's signed on the back because there are places that will refuse to even run your card if it's not signed. That happened to me when I was trying to buy things for my dorm and it was a hassle. If you're reaching accommodation that you have to buy your own kitchen stuff or your own linens, um, maybe just bring a sheet with you so that you can at least sleep the first night without having to worry about sleeping on a naked mattress. And then also maybe bring just some basic silverware so you don't have to worry about that for your first few meals. Even if you get delivery, sometimes I don't even include the silverware. So that's just something to think about too. Okay, so I think that's everything when it comes to packing for study abroad. If you've studied abroad and you 
want to mention something that I missed, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. If you're studying abroad soon, let me know where you're going. That's so fun. I'm so excited for you. I hope it goes well. I hope it's the time of your life. If there's any other videos you want me to do in this series, please also let me know in a comment down below. Shoot me a DM on Instagram. I would love to make more videos in this series and subscribe for more videos. Turn those post notifications or whatever. Follow me on Instagram. Um, what else? Follow me on TikTok, I guess. Twitter. That's it. Okay. Bye. Love you. And my last tip would be... Hello?